All right, what's up guys? Today we are checking out the new Warrior V2. I'm actually really excited to check this one out because the first paddle I ever did a first look on my channel was the Warrior. That was also my first real pickleball paddle. So it'd be kind of fun to see what they came up with this. And honestly, they made a lot of great changes to it. It's edgeless, has a raw carbon fiber face. And the raw carbon fiber face was the biggest thing everyone wanted. It had spray on grip previously. And even myself, I said, basically, if it had a raw carbon fiber face, it would have been awesome. So, all right, so for the specs, it's pretty basic. It still has a 3XL core, so there's three layers of core in here. There's two polymer sides of the core and then Nomex in the middle. They're calling it Aramid as far as I know. Those are the same thing. Uh, it's also edgeless, and they're also using something that they're calling core molding system. To be honest, it's probably just a fancy word for thermoforming because as far as I know, the only way to do a raw carbon fiber paddle that is edgeless is through thermoforming, and then it looks like they just painted over the thermoformed area so that you can't see it. And actually, if you look really closely on a lot of the areas of the paddle, we'll throw up some pictures, you can see where the paint is chipping. This is just out of the box. We haven't even hit this thing yet, but there's a lot of little imperfections. So my guess is that is the downside to doing this how they're doing it. Because as far as I have been told, it looks pretty ugly when it is thermoformed and you don't have an edge guard on it, but they tried it anyways. Other than that, it's very similar specs to the Warrior. It's same shape, same handle length. Uh, four and one eighth inch uh, grip size. It tapers, feels really good in the handle. It's a raw carbon fiber face like we mentioned. It now weighs 8.25 ounces instead of 8.5 ounces. So the weight reduction is nice, which also gives us a swing weight reduction because now it is 116 instead of 127. And that's a very significant drop, which should make this feel a lot faster in the hand. Other than that, not too much. It's 19 millimeter like before, so. We'll go check it out. All right, so before we do this, we're at my buddy's house. He actually built his own private court. I live very close, so thankful to be able to use this. And if my dinks look extra great today, it's because this net's a little low. So if I look a little better than normal, it's probably the net. Oh, yikes. Nice dink. Nice dink. Nice dink. Nice dink. Ah, nice shot. Woo! I almost killed the camera guy. All right, so first initial thoughts is it feels pretty good. I think I am noticing with most edgeless paddles that around the edges, it's not great. I mean, even when you have an edge guard, it's not, but it's not like the thermoforms we have right now, I think that perimeter weighting does help quite a bit. And at least from the specs, I don't believe this has edge foam, which also helps with some perimeter weighting. So you probably will notice the ball being a little bit more dead towards the edges. But so far I like it. Like in the hand, it feels pretty quick. It's not too slow. Maybe a little heavier than some of the other ones I've used, kind of like the, the R1 where it just feels really fast in the hand. But I'm liking it, nothing too uh, crazy so far, but it's feeling pretty good. All right, so really quick, I just wanna pause this video and say thanks to my friend Rick over at Mega. He has been very helpful in getting me paddles early so that I can have these videos done for you guys on launch day. He runs a facility in Minnesota called Mega Pickle and Pong. It's a great facility. If you guys are ever in the Minnesota area, make sure to go check out this facility because it's great. If you want more information, I'll leave a link down in the description. Uh. Oh my gosh. Nice shot. All right, so we just did some drops and some drives and it feels pretty good. Actually, hang on, let me catch my breath. It's toasty out here, man. All right, so we just did some drives and drops and honestly, the paddle feels pretty good. I don't really have any complaints. Again, I did notice Around the edges, I was noticing more of a clunk feel, whereas the other thermos, it kind of just goes right through it, but that's to be expected. If it's a fully edgeless paddle, I just think that's how it's gonna be until something else comes out and fixes that. But for now, that's what we have. Initially, it doesn't feel like anything crazy. Like I'm not hitting this and going, oh my gosh, this is way different than 
everything else on the market. It feels good. It just doesn't feel insane or really stand out. It's just like, yeah, this feels pretty good overall. I don't know. We'll, we'll hit some more balls here and figure out, but first couple hits, nothing insane, just pretty good. I just hit my head. <laughs> I, I when I rolled, I went like I bonked my head. I didn't hit myself that hard, but ow, that kind of hurt. All right, so the biggest thing I'm noticing right now is that off the face, the paddle feels pretty firm. It's not very soft or plush. It's not bad. I wouldn't really call it firm is the word I would use. It's not stiff or hard, kind of like the six zero double black diamond. It's just feels like it's got a very firm pop off the paddle doing a bunch of overheads and rolls and attacks at the net. I didn't feel like it was insane power. I think, again, some of the other thermos I've hit today or Black A's, they're more powerful. But for a 19 millimeter thick, I think you're getting a surprising amount of power. Like I wouldn't call this a soft or a squishy paddle. Like you're still getting good power out of it. So I think when you put it in the context of a 19 millimeter paddle, this is pretty impressive power. All right, just so everyone knows, this is, this is David. National Director of Pickleball at Lifetime, and he thinks he needs no warm-up. So after he gets bagged for the hundredth time, just remember he didn't warm up. Golden Pickle. Oh my goodness. Here's near two. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Nope. Uh-oh. This is not good. Oh! Oh no! You bagged the wrong guy! Oh jeez. That was aggressive. Oh that's... Look at this net! None of these go over! Oh no! He hit the center post! You already know I'm only putting in the clips where I look good, so you know. <laughs> yeah! <sighs> yeah! Three five power. Me. Yup. All right, so the biggest thing, obviously, that I think we're all expecting from the Warrior V2 to the original Warrior is the spin is definitely an upgrade. I haven't clocked the numbers yet. You'll see it somewhere on screen here after I do it in post, but it's definitely better than the original Warrior. That's no surprise. The one I'm using probably has no grit left on it. It's very well used. This is brand new raw carbon fiber. My initial thought is that I don't feel like I'm getting as much grab on the ball as some of the other ones I'm used to hitting. Like, I feel like when I use a Pulsar, like, that ball is really diving and kind of sinks into the face a little bit more. With this, I'm not getting the same sensation. It's not bad, don't get that impression. The spin is gonna be fine for 99.99% of you, but Ugh. the few of you who are looking for something that is just absolutely off the charts for spin, this might not be it. Serves, I would say they felt good, but not great. I've had basically any of the other thermos that have felt more powerful on my serve, a little less effort, but they're still great. Like I, if I had to go use this paddle, I wouldn't be complaining about it, but it's not wowing me off the serve. It just feels pretty good. Oh, fight. I'm not losing. Oh no. <laughs> Stupid. All right, guys, we're actually back in the studio now. So I had the chance to go out and play one more session in the evening with the paddle. I thought it would be good just to play some more doubles games and really get a feel for the paddle. I brought both the Warrior and the Warrior V2. 
And honestly, the more I thought about the paddle, the more it's about trade-offs, in my opinion. So you gain some things, but you lose some things that were nice about the original Warrior. And I think for some people, the new one's going to be better. For some, the old one might be better. So after playing with them, I honestly forgot how much I enjoyed the original Warrior. Like, it's just a really good paddle. The main problem with it was, again, that it had paint grit. And it used to fall apart, but... Again, I don't think that happens anymore. Anyways, I just drives felt so good on the regular Warrior. Like you had so much plow through because the paddle is a little bit heavier. In some ways, it did feel a little bit clunkier, but it it's just a good paddle. The main thing that I noticed you gain with the Warrior V2 is the hand speed. Hands absolutely feel better, but power, I honestly think it was a bit backwards. And the overall feel of the paddle, I think was better on the original Warrior, at least for me. I can't say for everyone, but the Warrior just had this really unique feel that feels really nice. Now with the Warrior V2, it just reminds me of a lot of raw carbon fiber paddles. It's a little bit different, but I didn't personally think it was the most satisfying feel in the world. Now, of course, that's completely subjective and is going to come down to a bunch of different people. But if you're hoping it felt like the original Warrior, but with more spin, it honestly just doesn't. One other thing I did notice after playing with it in the evening is I went to dig out a ball and, you know, just scraped the edge guard on the ground a little bit. And I did notice some chip marks in the paint on the uh, edgeless area. So I would highly recommend that you wrap this with something which is going to cover the color of it. But if you don't, I think you're going to see some marks on the paddle that you really don't want to see but that's kind of just how edgeless paddles go to begin with. All right, so after doing this first look, I found out that this paddle is actually gonna retail for $230. I was under the impression while doing the first look that it was gonna be $200. And after finding out that updated price, I honestly just don't think this paddle is a great value. At $200, I was like, okay, yeah, I could see this, but $230, you've just got some really, really stiff competition. And I honestly just don't think at $230, it competes that well. For me personally, there's a lot of other paddles I would want to choose for that price. If I'm gonna be completely honest, I think Diadem could have launched this paddle as its own separate line of paddle, and I don't know that anyone would have thought it was related to the original Warrior. I honestly think they're different enough that you wouldn't mix them up. So to me, it doesn't really feel like a Warrior V2 it kind of just feels like it could have been its own paddle. If anything, I actually think it's closer to being a Warrior Edge upgrade rather than a Warrior V2. So yeah, those are my first thoughts on the Warrior V2. I honestly just think it comes down to trade-offs. It's not that the paddle's bad, but you just have to manage your expectations if you are going to buy the paddle. ProDrive actually just recently released a raw carbon fiber version of their original paddle, which if you ask me was basically just a warrior that hit a little bit harder. So that paddle actually might be more of the warrior V2 that we were thinking. I don't personally have one. I haven't hit it yet. I couldn't tell you, but that's just my guess based on looking at it. That might be the warrior V2 that people are looking for. And then, you know, the warrior V2 from Diadem could just kind of be its own thing. So there you guys go. Hope that helps.